Hey everyone, welcome to SFDC Stop. And in this video, we are going to talk about asynchronous callouts in JavaScript and the pyramid of doom. Okay, so asynchronous callout is something when you are performing an API callout. So it is basically an API callout, or you can say a request to the external server, right? So whenever you are performing a request to the external server and fetching out some data, so that kind of callout is basically an asynchronous callout because it may take some time uh, for you to get the response from the external server, right? So that cannot be synchronous. Synchronous means that it cannot be, uh, it cannot be uh, kind of you know uh, halt the process in between or wait for the response because you are able to perform other operations. Meanwhile, the callout is uh, performed at the back end or I can say in a different process, right? So those kind of processes are known as asynchronous processes when they run independently and uh, they don't stop your work and uh, such kind of callouts whenever you are performing an API callout in an asynchronous process then that is known as an asynchronous callout right. So let's take an example and uh, for, for that particular example we are not actually going to perform an API callout but we are going to perform we are going to uh, do something similar right. So first thing that we need to understand is set timeout function. So set timeout is a kind of predefined function in JavaScript and what it does, it simply receives a function as a, you can say parameter. I mean inside this set, set timeout function, you can simply have a, a function body where you can add a console.log. For example, I can simply say that uh, uh, called, okay. And after that, you can specify that how many, uh, I mean after how much time do you want to call this function. So let's say this time is in milliseconds. Let's say if I say 1000 milliseconds and uh, I can define this function inside another function. So let's say I defined a function named as API callout. Okay. And this API callout function is going to uh, perform something and it is going to take one second to perform an API callout. And once that callout is done, uh, this call will be written over here. Okay. So we can simply do it like, uh, I mean, I can simply call this function API callout and we can see what's happening. So here you can see that uh, I got a called uh, uh, called message after one second. Let me just execute it again for you. So I'm going to execute it right now. And after one second, I'm going to get this message which is called. If I increase this time, let's say I increase it to two seconds now. Then uh, I can simply clear the console and run it again. And here you can see after two seconds, I'm going to get this message which is named as called. Right. So inside our API callout function, it is a kind of dummy API callout you can say because it is taking time to perform some operation. Right. So it is going to take some time to perform some operation and once that operation is performed successfully, this function which is inside the set timeout will be called uh, and uh, whatever code is written over here inside this function will be executed. Okay. So this is a kind of a fake API callout we can say where we are where our API is taking two seconds to, uh, to return the response. Now let's say I am performing a real API callout and in that API I want to pass a message. So the message can be let's say I am passing first. Okay. And uh, uh, apart from this I want to have a success callback. So a success callback and I want to have an error callback. So what I am saying I am passing three, three things in this three parameters. The first parameter is nothing but a message that I want to pass or I can say the data that I want to pass to my API. The second parameter is the success callback function. So I can simply name it as success callback. And the third parameter is the error callback function. So I can simply name it as error callback. So this success callback and error callback will be nothing but these will be functions, JavaScript functions. And in case my API callout is successful, I will be calling this success callback. And in case uh, my API callout is a failure, I will be calling this error callback. Okay. So in this case, I mean, this is a fake API callout. So I can assume I can assume here that uh, my API callout, assume my API callout is successful. Okay. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to um, kind of, you can say, call the success callback function. And in this function, I'm going to pass, uh, I'm going to just pass back my message that I'm receiving and that I passed in the API callout. I mean, this is a dummy, so I can do anything here. So in this case, I mean in the real real time scenario, you will be passing the response that you are receiving from the API. But in this case, I'm just replicating or you can say passing the message uh, that I received from my API callout. Okay. So let me just remove this console.log. And uh, and I, as I told you that this success callback and error callback are functions, right? So I can simply remove this and I can write a function over here. 
and this function will receive the message that I'm getting or you can say the response that I'm getting from the API callout okay and uh, I can simply say that I can add a console.log statement which will say that response um, response and then I can say let's say callout and then performed okay performed and uh, I can also define an error callback function it will be the same way like I can simply say a function and then an error and then uh, I can simply console.log that error so I haven't called this error callback anywhere but in, in case of real time scenario when you will be calling out you will see that if the callout is successful or not and in case of successful you will be calling this otherwise you will be calling the error callback function and we will be passing the error whichever is happening inside the I mean in the callout to the error callback right so I'm receiving the error here and simply console.logging the error down below. Okay, so let's see what's happening and uh, how can I call this function now. So here you can see that I have called my API callout function. I have passed first over here. So this first will move out here as a message. And after two seconds, this success callback will be called automatically. And this first that we have received in the message, it will be passed inside the success callback. And inside the success callback, when it will be passed, it will be received by this function because this is what is passed as a success callback, right? And after that, we'll be getting a, a message written over the console, which will say that first callout performed because I'm passing first and this first is itself received in here because uh, this first is moving from here to here to here and then it is coming back here, right? So it will be written, uh, written out like first callout performed, okay? let me just clear the console and try this again so here you can see after two seconds i'm getting a message that first callout performed okay so i'm just going to uh, make it one second so that we can perform the callouts very easily so we can say first callout performed after one second i'm getting it as first callout performed right so this is how i mean we used to uh, do callouts in javascript before promises and uh, this is how we used to deal with asynchronous call uh, asynchronous callout I mean uh, by passing a callback function and that callback will be called whenever the response is received okay so um, I mean if we, if, we if we talk about a single callout then it is fine I can do it like this right but let's say we have uh, five callouts or we have ten callouts one after another and all these callouts are chained right so the question is um, I can simply say that the question is what will happen in uh, chaining of asynchronous callouts asynchronous callouts okay so what will happen if i'm chaining 10 callouts and one callout is dependent on the another so let's say if first callout is performed successfully then you will be calling out a second api if that callout is performed successfully you will be calling out a third api if that callout is performed successfully you will be calling out a fourth api and in case there is an error you will be showing that error as well so how can you do that? So if we just take this kind of approach in which uh, I am passing a, I am passing two callbacks, success callback and error callback. What can I do? Let's say my first callout is performed, then I can simply copy and paste this code. And when it is performed successfully, at that point of time, I can again call this API callout function, and I can pass the data for my second callout. So let's say my data for second callout was second. Okay, and. Uh, so this is the this is passed inside the success successful response from first callout, and let's say I let let's try this once first of all. So this time I'm I am actually calling out two times. The first callout is performed, and once it is performed successfully, I get a message which says first callout performed, and then I'm performing the second callout, and when it is performed successfully, I'm getting another message which says second callout performed. Okay, so let's try this once first of all. So yeah, let's run this code and here you can see after one second, first callout performed and after two seconds, second callout performed, right? So this is, this is also fine. I mean, I'm able to do two callouts, but let's say I have five callouts, right? So I'm just going to copy this code. I'm going to paste it inside my success call, success callout method, right? So after the success callout of second API, I'm going to call uh, my third API, right? So I'm going to call my third API. And after the successful callout of third API, I'm going to call my fourth API, okay? And uh, after the successful callout of fourth API, I'm going to call my fifth API. So this will be my fifth callout, okay? 
and uh, I can simply um, kind of remove this spaces and uh, I think yeah I think that that's fine right? okay so this is how my code looks like now so this is the first call out and um, I mean I need to remove I think some of the spacing to show you exactly what's happening so okay I think now it's visible inside my screen yeah so here you can see uh, this is the first callout and in the first API callout whenever the successful callout is performed because this is the error message right this is the error callback function so whenever the successful callout is performed which is starting from here and ending here inside this callback I called another callout from callout and in this time I pass this the data for second callout and whenever this is performed successfully I am calling the third callout method which is uh, from here here to here and it is performing the third callout and whenever the third callout is performed successfully I am calling the fourth callout which is from here to here and whenever the fourth callout is performed successfully I am calling the fifth callout which is from here to here right so let us try this first of all and let's see if it's working fine or not and then we'll understand what's happening so here you can see after one second first callout performed after two seconds second callout performed third callout fourth callout and fifth callout right so all these callouts are performing after a gap of one second right so first callout, second callout, third callout, fourth callout, fifth callout, and that's it. It's done. Okay. So that's how. I mean, this is how you can call uh, multiple API callouts uh, one inside another. Because after the successful response only, I can call the second callout. After the successful response of that, I can call the third callout. After the successful response of that, I can call the fourth callout. And after the successful response of that, I can call the fifth callout. So this kind of structure, whenever I mean, whenever we used to see this kind of structure in JavaScript, whenever uh, we can, I mean, we see these kind of multiple API callouts one under another, then this kind of structure is known as pyramid of doom. So this kind of structure in JavaScript is known as pyramid of doom. And this is how we used to perform callouts uh, in JavaScript, where we used to have an API callouts method where the data will be sent to the API and we will have a success callback and error callback functions and uh, that those callback functions will be will be called whenever the uh, api callout is successful or there is an error in the api callout right and this kind of this kind of code or you can say this kind of structure uh, you can see it is a pyramid like structure right it is starting from here and then it's ending out here so this kind of pyramid like structure uh, this is known as pyramid of doom and how we can solve this pyramid of doom we can solve this pyramid of doom by using javascript promises right so in the next video we'll learn about javascript promises and we'll see how we can uh, simplify uh, asynchronous callouts asynchronous callouts or or you can say uh, pyramid of doom using promises okay yeah so that's all for this tutorial everyone i hope you liked it and uh, try to make this pyramid of doom on your own it's uh, it's quite interesting to deal with and i'll see you in the next video till then have a good day bye bye